Hey, it's Mike Fitt here. In this video, we'll very quickly talk about particle positions in Divinity Original Sin 2. And uh, specifically, we'll focus on uh, the particle composition you might need to play in the Epic Encounters 2 mod. Um, so, I did a video about the mod uh, previously. You can check it out. Uh, you should see the link right now. Uh, but um, this mod basically kind of ramps up the difficulty of the game somewhat. And it kind of makes the fights uh, go at a somewhat different pace than in the original campaign. So some of the things I might be saying now, uh, you know, might be kind of uh, not entirely uh, valid for the original game alone. Though I think they, sh they should be kind of possible to be generalized. So the first thing I feel like a every single composition needs is a solid dedicated tank. In my case, I'm using Red Prince here. And um, that's uh, my build is. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do a video on this, uh, but my build is basically this classic geomancer slash warfare tree, uh, and I'm using most of the defensive abilities from both trees, um, with the high emphasis on on well uh, fortify, on taunt, on challenge, uh, on the guardian skill, and on the living wall here. Um, I'm kind of going to do a video on all those characters later on, like. You know, emphasizing what kind of things are useful in the builds, but having a dedicated tank really helps. Because um, in, uh, I think in the original campaign as well, but especially in Epic Encounters, where there is not so much um, crowd control available to you, you actually need someone to just soak up the damage, right? And this tank should probably be wearing a shield as well, all the heavy armor you can get. So this is generally speaking a very strong uh, uh, frontliner that you need because all the enemies will be just doing much heavier damage in the modification of the game. I saw that people are playing um, without a tank in the normal original campaign, which is probably fine, but here actually to be comfortably completing the fights and just kind of um, controlling them properly, you need someone to kind of stand in the front line and just soak up the damage and taunt the enemies and maybe control the battlefield a little bit, okay? So this is what uh, the tank should be doing. And from there, I think you have a lot, like a lot of freedom what to choose other than the tank. Um, it's usually a good idea to have a support character. So I'm going with Lozi here as a support uh, because she well, she has the meta ending song, uh, which I'm actually not using that much anymore. But it's a useful uh, crowd control ability. Uh, so Lozi is a decent support. You could probably make Sabil into a support, though I like her as the archer, because she has the uh, cleanse ability uh, as her uh, as her uh, racial, right? So uh, you can probably choose between Lozi and Sabil here if you want a uh, support. Um, I think Beast could be okay as well. Maybe Fane. I'm not really a big fan of Fane because he cannot be Hydrosophist efficiently. So um, uh, as a support, you probably want to invest into a Hydrosophist tree, uh, so all those abilities that Hydrosophist offers are definitely going to be very useful. And then you have like a lot of choices. You can go for um, for Eurotherge, since Nether Swap is a very powerful spell and requires Eurotherge free. Uh, but you can just take those three points and just you know invest into something else, uh, because you know you want to, you you want your support to be useful in combat as well. So I chose Thunder uh, abilities. So the Lightning Bolt, Thunderstorm, are especially Thunderstorm is extremely potent in in the bigger fights later on in the game. Uh, but generally speaking, you should definitely take some Hydrosophist abilities. Fortify from the Geomancer tree also helps a ton. Um, and then you are basically just free to choose anything else that you want. But since the support, since you are a support, like I think having Nether Swap generally speaking helps a lot. So Euro Therage free is great because this basically allows you to swap the position of any two objects that you can see in combat. And those can be like bodies of the enemies, those can be actual opponents, those can be on your own character. So it's just extremely potent spell for this 2 AP to have, right? So you can see, like, you can basically move anything around, like two bodies, you can switch enemy and the body in combat. Uh, so yeah, having three levels in Euro Third is extremely, extremely useful. And then after that, you're just basically free to choose like two builds that do heavy damage. Um, in Epic Encounters, it's good to mix up physical and magic. So here I have a Necromancer who does uh, well some elemental damage, some physical damage, and I have a uh, a purely physical uh, archer, but she does some elemental damage as well with the arrows. So depending on what I really need in combat, uh, I can do this. So this character is pretty one-dimensional. I feel like if you have a hunter, a huntsman that is, uh, they should be kind of focused on being a huntsman alone, but you can obviously just mix things up a little bit. But like the huntsman trees are just, uh, the skills are just generally speaking very powerful. So I just went with huntsman uh, without any other side specs. 
Uh, she only has the haste um, because I think it's like, good to have something to do with those extra two APs. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically this, right? So uh, a tank, a healer, and two damage dealers, two dedicated damage dealers who uh, who basically just kind of cover for those two guys uh, who are you know t making your opponents uh, busy. That's the ba that's basically the safe core uh, for every team, and you should be able to just if you if you choose those four uh, like two damage dealers, uh, a tank, and a support, you should be able to complete the campaign no problem. Um, now the damage dealers obviously don't have to be uh, a scoundrel or a necromancer or a huntsman. You can entirely skip those. You can go for like a pyromancer for two pyromancers as well. I think those are very strong because then the damage stacks a lot. Uh, you can mix like pyromancer with uh, with uh, erothage uh, for some more utility as well. There are just so many possibilities, right? Um, to do those builds. I'll talk about my particular builds uh, a bit later on, so you can see I have a scoundrel slash necro, and I have a huntsman here. I'll talk about those in some later videos, uh, but I think this is it, right? The general team composition has been described. So uh, I hope that you found this useful. Um, uh, stay tuned for the future videos. You know, leave me a like or leave me a comment if you think there is something I could improve about this video in particular. Uh, and you know, remember to subscribe if you want to support the channel and if you want to keep the content coming, right? So thank you.